Hello, my name is James Cash. Uh, today I wanted to do another little video about um, extending and customizing uh, some Emacs stuff. Uh, the thing I want to look at today was a little more uh, specific to using Emacs with Evil mode, which is the uh, Vim key emulation. Uh, when I uh, switched back from Vim to Emacs, uh, I really wanted to kind of keep a lot of the same key bindings that I gotten used to. Um, and Although the Evil emulation does a really good job of um, emulating the functionality of Vim, having the same key bindings, uh, customizing it is a little different. So I want to talk a bit about how that works. So first, I want to look at something that I wanted to be able to do is evaluate Lisp expressions. Um, in this case here, I'll do an example with Emacs Lisp, uh, but for most of them, it could be in Clojure. And the, so the default, there's a package called Eros, which lets you hit a key binding, eval an expression, and then have this little overlay show what it evaluates to. Um, and so I did that with just the normal Emacs key binding, a control X, control E to evaluate it. But I, I wasn't really used to doing things that way. What I wanted was to be able to do something using a, v, like a Vim motion. So perhaps with the cursor inside the parentheses, I'd hit a key like, um, so the one that Fireplace uses that I copied would be a G-O and then say a parentheses, so around parentheses, but I could have like a Vim motion and tell me which code I wanted to evaluate and you can see that does the same thing. In practice, it works pretty similar, but I'm just kind of more used to evaluating an expression with my cursor at the front so in that case, G-O and then capital W, where the capital W um, is doing a pair edit motion to move over a whole expression. So that would also work even if we had you know, broken our expression up a little bit more. Kind of have the cursor here, say G-O, capital w, w, to evaluate the whole thing. So the first thing I want to do is figure out how to do that. So step zero is figuring out how exactly the Eros system does this to show those nice little overlays. And to do that, um, I use kind of the tricks I talked about in my previous video about introspective Emacs, which is to just see, okay, well, what key binding is that control X, control E doing? So my help key F1K, control X, control E, that tells me it's running this arrows eval last S expression. Um, so then I can just go have a look at that. I see it's calling arrows eval overlay and then just eval last s expression. So pretty simple. I can I'm just gonna all I need to do is use this arrows eval overlay, and then the arguments I give it are the result, that expression that I want to show, and that I, that's just using built-in Emacs evaluation functions, and then where I want it, the um, thing to appear. Um, I don't feel super great about this because this naming convention of like arrows dash dash eval overlay does generally indicate that it's like an internal function, not really meant for external use, but it's working. It's Emacs, so even though it's you know a private function, I can still use it, which is quite nice. Because in practice, it's fine. And if arrows changes how it works, I'll update my code. Hasn't been a problem yet though. So what I want to do though is be able to bind this to a key. Um, but the question is going to be, how do I tell it which extent I want it to cover? Because what I want is to be able to say, okay, I have some key to trigger it, and then I'm going to do an evil, like a motion, a Vim motion to say what code I want to get evaluated. Um, so for that, there is a built-in function for that called evil define operator, um, which you can use to define exactly what it sounds like, an operator, a function that will take an operator. So if I go into in my uh, config, my cogent uh, elisp, I have a similar binding for Clojure. You can have a look at after. So for this evaluate, we we do this evil define operator function, which if we look at the documentation for that, tells us. So we give it um, operator it takes these arguments. We give it a doc string and then have a body. So Essentially, we just give it the command name, and then when it's called, it will kind of the evil machinery will take over, 
let us do whatever gesture. And then our function just gets the beginning and end of the indicated region. So very conveniently, I then can just use the built-in, the functions I need. So I use eval expression to just get the, um, the Lisp code that was between the beginning and end region, evaluate it, and then use that arrows eval overlay function. And then I say I wanted to show up at the end. Um, and so just by defining this, so this defines this cogent evil list, evil elisp eval, which then I can bind to a key. So I bound to go. So I go, then that gesture evaluates the code. Note that I also did um, a similar thing. Something I usually like to do is have an equivalent that replaces the um, the code with what it evaluated to. So with this list here, if I go capital W to show it. A lot of times so I maybe want to calculate it and then do more work on it. So I can do G exclamation mark word and it replaces that S expression with the value. So doing it this way, if this is all you need, a function that take that like, wants to integrate with, with the evil movement thing, it's quite simple, quite easy to do with these built-in functions. Um, I have a similar thing for a closure. This is kind of where I got the idea copy like the fireplace, um, Vim fireplace uh, bindings. So same thing here, you have these functions that just pass it to CIDR, so the eval region makes it very straightforward. Similar things for deleting and inserting it. The replacing it is a little complicated because the overlay thing tries to be smart for Clojure code and will like elide it if it's too long, but for replacing it, I actually want it to be the whole thing. Whatever. Something to talk about another day. So, if all you want to do is define um, a elisp function that can take user motion, it's very easy using this built in evil define operator. So the other thing I want to look at though is something that's a little more uh, complex. And this is if you want to do a trick that um, I most saw in Vim, uh, Tim Pope's um, many great plugins like to do where instead of having, say, bindings for a plugin be under like a leader key, so you have to do, you know, space or backslash or whatever, and then some combination that it kind of steals, what can be nice is if you can use some of the existing commands um, and take advantage of the fact that a bunch of things aren't defined in the operator key map. So for example, um, one of the things that I found really handy from the Vim Abolish plugin, again by uh, Tim Pope, um, there are these commands where if you have your cursor on a word, you can, I mean, well, spoiler alert, I'll, I, we have it in Emacs now, I'll show you what it does. So we say we have something uh, with hyphens or kebab case. I can type CR underscore, change them all to be underscore separated, CR dash to change them to be hyphen separated, CRC to change them to be camel case. I mean, kind of rotate between um, all these things. So this is neat. And as I say, the thing I like is that these are all on these related key bindings. So it's like CR dash, CR underscore, CRC, and so on. Um, but then the question is like, how can you, how do you define these key bindings in Emacs with evil? In Vim, it's pretty straightforward. You can just bind these two keys and the Vim key binding machinery will essentially just figure it out. So the reason this works is the C key would normally be change. Um, but then what this effectively does is define these R and then whatever things in the operator key map. So there's no operator that starts with an R, so there's no conflict, so this just works fine. In Emacs though, if you try to define the functions this way, you'll end up um, shadowing the bindings for evil change. So then doing stuff like C dollar sign, say, to like change things in normal uh, Vim slash evil meaning of C doesn't work anymore. So to make this work, use a little trick. So if we go to the evil where I was defined, so the kind of key thing, so I mean, this is the function that actually does the work of finding the word, changing the characters in it, whatever. 
Um, so these use kind of two tricks here to do this. So I have this function called evil interactive setup that this is what we use as the argument to interactive defining the function. So it says evil inhibit operator, which we can look at the documentation, help v, evil inhibit operator. And the important thing this tells us is the way this works is if you set, if you have an operator that sets this to T, then it doesn't actually do the operator moving stuff. So what this lets us do is we can define a function. Here I'm using a macrolet um, around this function because I'm defining a bunch of related functions. And this was kind of a convenient way of defining a couple functions that do very much the same thing. So it defines a function, takes as an argument to the operator, um, which the we and then we get interactive this function. So we'll call this function the thing it returns. So it say don't actually use their op operator. And then the argument it returns is the evil, like this operator, what the kind of key before was. And then we can just check what was that operator. Because in this case, if I wanted to bind to C, I only want to be if the operator was change. So I say if the operator was the change operator, then call this function here that I've defined. And then these do the definitions. And then where I install these bindings, so this defines this cogent kebab case, snake case, camel case. We then define them on the operator key map. So you know that where I define this function, uh, the bindings in the operator map is just like r dash r underscore. But the key I'll actually use to invoke them is like cr dash cr underscore, mimicking how uh, vim abolish does it. So because then to go over what happens then, I press c. And so that calls evil change, and it's now in operator pending mode. It's waiting for some key binding in the operator mode map, which normally would be like a gesture to say, okay, I want to change this much or what have you. Um, but then if I press R hyphen, then it will call this function, and that function will get called with the argument being like the current operator. So in this case, that would be the evil change. And then it will say, hey, don't actually do the movement, call our function, and we get what we want. Um, this can potentially have some sort of like strange effect. So if I type say dr and then wait for something, if I dr dash, it will do nothing because the, the, the function I wrote there specifically checks um, was the operator the change operator and only does something there. But we can see here it was still waiting and which key is actually showing those possible bindings um, because I press delete. So that's maybe a little awkward because even though I want these functions to just be bound to like CR dash, CR underscore, what have you, they are now just in the operator map generally. So if you use any other um, evil function that takes an operator, if I say even those ones I did before, the GO, I type like R, whatever, and it's still waiting, even though there's no possible operator that will do anything. So G-O-R dash whatever, so G-O again be my function to a lot of it Lisp code, these bindings still show up even though they do nothing. So that's not ideal. Um, I've done stuff in the past where what you could do, uh, general, the library I'm using to uh, define these key bindings here, has the ability to make like a dispatcher function where you could use this to say, okay, C now instead of just calling evil change does this dispatcher thing where it can either call evil change or go through these other maps. Um, it was kind of complicated and I feel like this solution is easier, works better for me. Um, I don't particularly care that um, these other, these operators show up in other, like in all these places now, but something to keep in mind. So. One of the places where kind of the abstraction of evil leaks a little bit, um, but still uh, gives you some very useful capabilities. So there's lots of other kind of interesting, weird little edge cases of kind of evil where the Vim and Emacs world combine. I think the way the, the, the places where I noticed maybe the biggest difference, like in interface between evil and Emacs, was definitely in this stuff, is in like defining um, exactly where things get defined. 
But um, hopefully, if you're trying to use evil in Emacs, uh, this was somewhat educational or useful to you. Um, hopefully, it empowers you to do more interesting things, bring more fun Vim behaviors over to Emacs, or kind of give existing Emacs command more evil powers. So I hope you found this interesting. Um, let me know in the comments if you did, if there's anything else you'd like me to, to uh, discuss, and have a great day.